<laughs> All right, let's go to the Lord in prayer. The people are still coming in. That's fine. And Father, we love you. We praise your name. We thank you for your grace and your mercy. We thank you for this night, this chance to be in your house, to worship you in spirit and truth. Lord, those that want to be here, Lord, help them get here. Those that would like to be here but for other reasons can't, bless them too, Lord. And Father, those that lost the desire, touch them too in the name of Jesus. We love you. We thank you for it. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. Preacher was walking through town and, and introduced himself, and he came up to a, a, a farmer, and the farmer had a pig out in the field with a wooden leg. And so he asked, he asked the man, said, uh, can you tell me how that pig got a wooden leg? He says, you just don't understand the relationship me and that pig. He said, that pig is the smartest animal I've ever had. He said, well, why has he got a wooden leg? He said, well, hold on. He said, one night I was sleeping in the in the house living room, and I kicked over the lamp and caught the house on fire. The pig busted out of a stall, ran in, busted into the house, grabbed me by my shirt collar, pulled me to safety. He said, well, that's still telling me why he's got a wooden leg. He said, well, hold on. One day I was using the tractor, and the tractor turned up on me, and I was unconscious, and the gas was going everywhere, and I before the fire started, the pig busted out of the stall, dug a trench around the tractor, pushed the fire, pushed the gas away, grabbed me by my collar, and pulled me to safety again. He said, it still don't tell me why that pig's got a wooden leg. He said, well, you see, that pig saved my life twice. I didn't say how in the world I could eat him all at one time. <laughs> Crash and burn. All right, we've been, <laughs> we've been talking about this now for this is the, the, the fifth week. Uh, and, and I'm just going to briefly, for those that have have missed some, just know that this this paper started out up here, and it just keeps adding. And so the, so tonight, other than the very beginning, the introduction, you've got all the reasons. You just might not have all the all the stuff under, but you got all the reasons uh, for trials in your life. So here it is: uh, five ways God uses problems in your life. The problems you face. So I'm just going to read over this till I get till I get to the fifth one. Okay? If you got any questions or any any Anything you want to say or, or comments, f please feel free to butt in any time. All right, the problems you face will either defeat you or develop you, depending on how you respond to them. I like to think about that in my own life constantly. The problems you face will either defeat you or develop you. Think about that, all right? Depending on how you respond, here it goes. Have you ever failed to see how God wants to use problems for good in your life? We think if we're a Christian, we have a problem-free life, everything's hunky-dory, we don't have anything to go through, and that's not so. I mean, it's like today, my granddaughter, uh, she was playing, uh, in the summer she was playing baseball, she was a power hitter for a travel ball team, and she swung so hard that her, her kneecap came off of her knee, went around in her leg, cut, an, cut a, an inch oval piece out of her femur, and, and tore her knee up. They had, it took several hours to rebuild it in surgery, and then it started locking. She went to play. It says, you might come play baseball again. We don't know. She's she's just turned just a, she's a sophomore, and so today they go back in because it keeps locking. And they and he said, is she gonna come out and gonna be elevated or is she gonna come out and walk? And I don't know which. Got in there and thank God, uh, has still had to have work done to it. Had had surgery, but this time she walked out. Because he said, now it's, it's scar tissue, and, it's, and he said, if she's not careful, because he had to rebuild the kneecap, it's still trying to go off to one side. He said, well, we can do that through, through uh, rehab and build her muscles up. I think we can fix that. So she's got to wait four months. But again, she was she ate, drank, and slept baseball or, or softball. But you see what's happened since she got hurt. She took her mind off of baseball. And in just a matter of a couple of months, is playing that guitar like she'd been playing it for years. In the, in the praise team, y'all heard her play? How good she's doing? But if she'd been playing baseball, she would not have been learning the guitar like she's learned. So she took that same that same energy that she used in baseball, she used in her guitar. And she does not sound like somebody been playing for, for six months. She sounds like somebody been playing for six years. I mean, it's just amazing to hear her play. Yeah. And so again, I thank God, not for her being hurt, but I thank God that instead of her sitting back, and feeling sorry for herself, and 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 just worried to death about playing baseball, and blah 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 blah. Why does life treat me like this? No, instead, she refunneled her energy to her singing and her playing, and and just and you can see what happened just a matter of months. Okay, so again, and anybody I think of has ever been hurt or something's gone wrong with them? If they 
keep a good attitude about it, you'll find out God's using that problem to, to, to direct you in a different ways. So here's the way he does it. Here it goes. Number five ways. The first week was God uses problems to direct you. And of course, sometimes God must light a fire in it to get you moving. And problems often point us in a new direction or motivate us to change. And of course, Proverbs 20 and 30 says, The blueness of a wound cleanses away evil, so do stripes the inner parts of the belly. Number two, God uses problems to inspect us. People are like tea bags. You know, I say this all the time. I went to Walmart when I was first started shopping. I went to Walmart. I didn't have Walmart then. I went to Food Line and I saw these tea bags up on the shelf, generic, and it said, just like Lipton. And I bought them, and it looked just like Lipton. It smelled like Lipton. But until I put it in hot water, I found out it wasn't like Lipton. Lipton took one bag. This took three bags in the same thing because until you get in hot water, you don't know what you're made of. Mm -hmm. So so God, God already knows what we're made of. But he lets us get in hot water, so we'll see what we're made of. Mm -hmm. Okay, now, uh, and so we can see things happen, just like Sister Kitty, with, when she fell down in the snow, and broke her elbow, you could have laid there unconscious in that snow and died, froze to death. But instead, you said God picked you. couldn't even get up, and God picked you up. Sure did. That's right. So sure that, did. That's amazing how, how tough she is. So, stood me right up. There you go. So, God uses problems to inspect you. Has, your, you. has God tested your faith? I'm not talking about the world testing your faith. Has God tested your faith? There's a difference. The world will try your faith, meaning they want to yank it away. God will test it. He doesn't test to pull it away. He tests to build it up, to strengthen it. Now, uh, when you have many kinds of troubles, and we're going to talk about this later on tonight too, be full of joy because you know that these troubles test your faith, and this will give you patience, James 1, 2, and 3. Number three, God uses problems to correct you. Some lessons being learned through pain and failure. You know, a lot of times I, I, would, I would let these in Daniel and Bethany you know, I would just back up and say, okay, I've told you two or three times you're not going to listen, so I'm going to back up, and I'm going to watch it. I'm going to watch. And I'm not going to let you get hurt too bad, but I'm going to let you go ahead and get in this thing <coughs> as you see. And 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 just the other night I was watching Andy Griffith. Anybody like to watch Andy Griffith? Mm -hmm. Always got a good lesson in it. There was this, uh, Bill Bixby was this rich kid who was speeding through town and, and caused a problem, and his daddy was a rich guy who was going to get him out of trouble. Well, while he's with Andy... And he's really resenting Andy, but he's watching what Andy does with Opie. Opie broke somebody's window playing baseball. And he said, okay, no more allowance until that window's paid for. He said, okay, Dad. Or, or why do we call him? Pa. Okay, Pa. And, and he said, and, and uh, Bill Bishop said, why don't you just go ahead and get your kid out of trouble? And he said he would not learn anything. He would not develop him. I'd rather develop him. And so when he grows up to be a man, there'll be a difference in him. And and so uh, when they finally come to the court and his daddy was trying to buy everybody off to get this guy, get Bill Bixby out of trouble, Bill Bixby said, no, stop, I did it, I was wrong. And the lawyer said, be quiet, we've got you, we've got you out of this. He said, no, he says, I need to learn how to, like Andy said, I'm teaching my son how to stand on his own two feet. He said, I've got a window, I broke a window and I want to learn how to stand on my own two feet. Mm -hmm. So again, that's really awesome. God uses problems to correct you. And then God uses problems to protect you. A problem can be a blessing in disguise that prevents you from being harmed by something more serious. Uh, I, I, I was with DC today, and as, we were, as, as, as uh, Sierra was being operated on, DC and I went, to, she wanted some, uh, she wanted some uh, Krispy Kreme donuts when she came out. And of course, it was a struggle, but I went, I went there and got her some. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it was all I could do to pull in there, but I, you know, you know so, 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 and, and the hot light wasn't when you left there. The hot light, the hot light was smoking. It actually it was smoking when I left, uh, and that was funny because I got a, a, a dozen mix and I got a dozen right straight out of the hot box, and they were, and there was little some youngins in the in the outpatient surgery center, so uh, we were giving everybody donuts, and you couldn't even get the donuts out of the box because they were so hot they had. Okay. Uh, 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 they were good. I'd rip them off and just hold them up and just fall. <sighs> good stuff. Okay, but I was telling D.C., D.C. said, Daddy, I, because he's a contractor, said, 
I almost had that job right there. He said, look at how bad that looks. And I looked up and said, that's really bad, son. And he said, Dad, they shouldn't have done it that way. I said, I understand. He said, but I had a chance for that job, and I just didn't get it. I don't know why. And I told him, I said, son, look at it this way. That's going to get whoever's doing this in trouble anyway. And I know you wouldn't do that kind of work, but there's steel beams, steel beams and stuff. And he said, I said, look at it this way. If you'd have got it, you wouldn't have been ready for it because you'd have grown too fast. I said, you need to stay back and grow slow. And he says, I understand, Daddy, but still, I could have had that. <laughs> I said, I understand that. But just remember, God was protecting you. Here it is how he protected. And I left these words up here. Joseph, uh, when he was in prison, he was in prison for, for eight plus years, and the, the, the butler said, I'm going to tell Pharaoh about you and the dreams that you interpret. When I get out, he got out and he forgot for two more years. So he was in there for 10 plus years uh, for, no, for, for no harm. He had not done anything. But God protected him and then propelled him because in one day, one day he went from, from the prison to the palace. One day he went from the lowest, <coughs> the lowest, and considered in Egypt the lowest species of person, a prisoner, to the prime minister of Egypt. The only person he had to answer to was Pharaoh, and everybody else answered to him. So, it's just one day, just like that. And then Jonah, God prepared a great fish to swallow him up, and he was in the belly of that fish for three days and three nights. God protected him in that belly of that fish, because if he hadn't been in that fish, he'd have drowned. So it's right now, I'm up in the belly of the fish, and wondering why God are you letting us be in this fish, because it stinks, and Jonah even called it the belly of hell. It's but. He didn't realize he was being protected and directed because he went 2,000 miles out of the way to get away from where God told him to go. And when that fish vomited him up, he vomited him on dry land at Nineveh, right where God told him to go. And then Jeremiah. Jeremiah was in prison for telling the truth. But he was in prison when, uh, when the Syrians came and took out um, Jerusalem. So he was protected in that prison and after everybody was destroyed and the king had his eyes put out, they went into prison and found him and pulled him out. So he was protected and delivered. So sometimes we think we're in bad problems, we think things are going rough, and don't realize God's protecting us. And I've seen him protect me many a time, and at the time I didn't think it was protection. Matter of fact, I said, God, if you don't mind, can you please quit helping me? <laughs> okay? Now here we go. Here's the final one. He, he directs you, inspects you, corrects you, protects you. And now he perfects you. Wow. This is probably the hardest one. Um, how many has ever taken out a piece of wood and you wanted to use it as finished wood and you had to take, you had to take, if it was rough, you had to take hard, coarse sandpaper. And then at the end you had to take fine sandpaper to make it nice and neat and smooth. If, if you're using a piece of metal, um, I used to, when I was, when I was hanging conduit, uh, you, after you after you cut the pipe, and you had to ream it out. Not to ream it out, you still had to go around and take. You had to clean it up so it wouldn't tear the or cut the wire, or cut people's hands. Again, heavy duty stuff. You're doing all this work, and you have to stop to clean everything up to put it together. Well, some of us right now don't understand why we're going through what we're going through. Everything has stopped. We don't realize that God could be cleaning the ends up. So you can put it together. You can be fixing things up in a better way so it'll fit better. And fit the pieces will fit together better. So perfection does not mean that you don't make any more problems. You don't have any more problems and everything's cool. Perfection just means that you've you've grown, you've matured. And so 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 here we go. We're gonna read this scripture right here. Go turn to James. Now, of course I've got it written down here for you, but turn to James. Chapter 1, I'm reading from the uh, New King James Version. James chapter 1. James, a bondservant of God and of the Lord Jesus Christ, to the twelve tribes which were scattered abroad. And again, the very first night we talked about scattered abroad, that word is dispersia in the Greek, which means these people weren't just scattered as in they were <coughs> walking around aimlessly. They were driven. They were driven into different areas because of the persecution. This is heavy-duty stuff. These guys are running for their very life. And he goes, so I'm, I'm going to send this to all y'all that are running for your life. All y'all that are beginning to doubt that God's even with you anymore. That you're beginning to have a, a second thoughts about even serving God. So here it is. My brethren, 
count it all joy when you fall into various trials. That word count uh, literally means, it is an accounting term, it means to, to pull everything together, all the situation, all the problems, everything you're going through, and put it together and calculate and think about, count it all joy, all just the good things I'm going through, the bad things I'm going through, the hurt, the pain, the suffering, the happiness, the sadness, put it all together and count it all joy, which means to, all joy means to mix with no other emotion. How hard is it to be joyful when you're hurt? Can't be happy. Happy to, happy comes from the root word ha happenings. Can't be happy all the time because the things around us are not always happening in a good way. But joy is not based on happenings. Joy is based on a relationship. Keep the joy in your heart. When you fall into <laughs> various trials, that word fall means to fall into something that's all around you. Knowing that the testing of your faith produces patience. That word testing literally means... Uh, testing your faith means to, to literally be testing everything you believe in, everything you hold true to, everything that you actually think should be happening and it's not. That's the testing of your faith. It's not this little thing where, 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 where some of these guys out here on television, some people out here talking, it just drives me up the wall. And they say, if you're serving God, you won't be having problems. Sometimes we have problems because we are serving God. So, but it, uh, it produces patience, and patience is cheerful endurance. But let patience have its perfect work, that you may be perfect and complete, lacking nothing. So, so let's just stop right here. Uh, perfect and complete. It's talking about perfection. You know, every one of us, God wants us to be a perfection. Again, it does not mean you're without flaw, because anybody here without flaw, raise your hand. <laughs> They none of us did. No. I put my hand. I put my hand down. That's right. So that's what this does. So, so again, this here's, here's another another version. My brother, count all joy in your fond of various trials, showing the testing of your faith produces patience. Here it is. But that have its perfect work. You made perfect and complete. So, so let's go through. This. You know, how many's been stressed out any lately? I found something very good. Matter of fact, uh, if y'all like, I can make y'all a copy. I'll be glad to make y'all copies. Something that really works well. Uh, uh, it, it helps me. Uh, I, I use this all the time. And it has, since I've got it, it has reduced my stress. But you're in a hurry. I want to see it if it helps. <laughs> it says, place this on a firm surface. Follow directions in the circle. Follow directions in the circle. Repeat. Step two is necessary or until unconscious. If unconscious, see stress reducing activity. And yeah, where do you hang that, Daddy? Uh, I hang this in the living room. Can so I just hang that up for the teenagers to do? It would be fun to watch. I'll video it. I'll put it on YouTube. <laughs> Bang head. Here. Look, look, I'm going to tell you what now. Y'all need to be careful with those. Those cupcakes. Matter of fact, I'm so scared that some of y'all might have problems. You might just put them over here, and I'll be, I'll I'll bite the bullet for you. Oh yeah. <laughs> don't take the heat. I get any heat. I take the sweet. Well, I don't know who was kind enough to buy Dollar Tree cupcakes. Eddie. Okay. Thank you. She's Thank selling you. them for a youth group right Eddie. now, fifteen dollars a dozen, and they're all different mixed flavors. Oh my God, they're good. Oh no, they make a bitch who kick out a stained glass window. Yeah. I, I had to hold my leg while I was eating it. She does, a, she does a espresso one that has a coffee flavor to it. Or coffee flavor. I, I ate that banana one. I'm telling you. I look for pillings. Okay, my name. That's her Bible study. That's right. Thank you, sister. <laughs> you got me all messed up talking about sweets. Here you go. So watch this. Here we go. Here's what you think. I want you to write this down in your outline. There's four things in this scripture I want you to think about uh, from James. It's very important that you remember these words here. Number one, I need you to think about this, and when you're going through something that's really stressing you out, I mean stressing you out, number one, rejoice. He says, my brother, count it all joy, meaning do not mix it with any other emotion. Because if you mix with another emotion, you will drown out your joy. We don't need to drown it out. Have you ever drowned out your own joy? 
like I was telling Beth the other day, I remember watching DC. I was over there in church the other day. I seen DC and Daniel when they were little, little bitty things, grabbing their own hair and pulling it and crying and going, it hurts, it hurts. And I said, well, let go. <laughs> They're having a fit. They're the ones holding her hair. And then Bethany, when we first got here before we, before we adopted her, when I was fostering her, she did not like broccoli. We put bro gave her broccoli, and Linda uh, Beverly said, you better eat that broccoli. And she put broccoli in her mouth and she said, it tastes bad. And she said, well, you're going to sit there until you swallow it. And she sat there 45 minutes within her mouth tasting bad before she would swallow it. <laughs> it tastes bad. Well, swallow it. It's going to keep tasting bad. This thing going to change. you got to get rid of it out of your mouth. No. Okay, so, again, rejoice. Consider it pure joy. Put pure joy by rejoice. Pure joy. Pure joy. This letter was written to Christians that were suffering for their faith. Dispersia. They were being driven out of Jerusalem because Jerusalem was under attack. They hated the Christians. They were blaming the Christians. There's some bad stuff going on. And Nero, later on, Nero even, he wanted a piece of land and he couldn't get this piece of land. So he burnt, he burnt, he burnt it down and blamed it on the Christians. And, 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 and it says that the legend is he fiddled while, 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 while it was burning, uh, while, while Rome and then while it was burning, and he blamed it on the Christians. And the Christians actually for miles, for miles, were on, were, 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 were put up and, and run through, and they were lit on fire, and they were the streetlights during all this time. I haven't seen it. It must be streetlights lately. Have you? Okay, that's some bad stuff. All right, so here we go. Trials are inevitable. You're not going to get away from it. They're going to happen. It says, when you fall into various trials, fall into something that's all around you. And when that happens, not, when, not if, when you fall in. That's what he says. He says, he says, when you fall, not if, when you fall into various trials. Now, this is encouraging. He didn't say if, he said when. I like, I like if better than when, don't you? I much like we, if a whole lot better. Okay, but but here it is. Uh, many kinds are various here. Uh, literally, y'all gonna like this. The word used for many or various trials is where we get the word where we get the, the Greek word for polka dot. Polka dots. Think about it. <laughs> Think about it. And remember back in the day when the computer first came out. What was what what was what was the the the, the way that the the Printing was done. Dot matrix. matrix. Dot matrix. And so if you look really good, you see a letter, but if you got real close, it was a bunch of dots put together. <laughs> and so he's saying is, just like the polka dots are varied, your trials are going to be varied and they're going to be everywhere. But you got to remember this, they've got a purpose. Trials always have a purpose. If they didn't, God wouldn't allow them. Just like I said with DC and Daniel and Bethany, and I know God does it with me. Amen. <laughs> I know God does it with me too, and that is, is He allows me to get in trouble. He allows you sometimes to get in trouble, it's not not so you get hurt, to learn. And when DC and Daniel were little, I would, instead of just telling them what to do, many times what I would do is I would set the parameters. i said, say, here's your choices. You can do this, this, or this. i determine what they were going to choose from, and i set the parameters so they wouldn't be hurt, but now they didn't face the consequences for their choices. That way, they learned to make better decisions when they got older. And it has worked because they really have. They're going to be quite some awesome young men. And not just because they're my boys, but just I know that they've, they've proven themselves. And I thank God for that. But let me tell you what, they've proven themselves. They drove me crazy doing it, but now they've done it. All right. Now, it says, knowing this, the testing of your faith produces patience. They were testing. What you think about this word testing? Back in the day, during this day and, and during the Bible days, if if they were making pottery, they would put the pottery in a kiln. How many knows what a kiln is? And they would burn it. They would or put it in the tent seat, not burn it, put it in the tent seat to, to, to make it strong. Because without it, stuff would fall all to pieces, the elements would get to it, it would just be useless. But once you put it in the kiln, now it's got now it's got strength that's added to it. But after it was pulled out of the kiln, 
And they've dug up pottery from that era, era and found this written on it. Uh, Dukamos was written on it. Dukamos. D-O-K-I-M-O-S. Dukamos. Which means? Dukamos means approved. It means that it's gone through the fire. And it stood the test. It's approved. It did not crack. It's just, it, got, it has tensile strength. So, you know, when we're going through things, we've gone through, if we go through the first without, without cracking, then we've got docomos written over us. You might not can see it, but God sees it. So I've got, sometimes I've got docomos written over me, and sometimes I've got dummy written over me. Amen. And Beth, you ain't got to be so vocal. Well, I got the same thing. At least I'm not an idiot. <laughs> oh, that was so funny. I'm telling you, still got a couple miles off that one. Okay. <laughs> so, so dunk them most. <laughs> the testing of your faith means, it means literally the, the same thing as a kiln where you actually uh, fortify and fix the pottery so it can actually be used. So you don't you think you're having your strength taken away, but actually you're getting more strength. Uh, somebody asked me one day, said, how in the world have you gone through this, 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 or this? <clears throat> I said, it was only by God's, God's strength and ability. I said, but I can tell you one thing right about now. They said, well, I, said I think I can ride down the highway, uh, down an old dirt road, ride in a 57 Chevrolet, and take nitro, nit nitroglycerin and go from one bottle to the next and not be afraid <laughs> because of the trial that I just come through. How about, you ever felt that way? Uh -huh. After the trial, not during the trial. During the trial, you want to, look, during the trial... But after the trial, okay, so now, it says, it, it, patience. Here is a loop word. I want you to think about this word, patience. Uh, matter of fact, I don't want, I, I, uh, I want you to think about this very strongly. Uh, patience is cheerful endurance. So patience, does. this is not patience, watch. I'm waiting, God, but you better tighten up. I'm waiting, I'm waiting, I'm waiting, I'm waiting, I'm waiting. I got to learn this. Patience. Is there any, you got you got a, uh, something to help them? <laughs> I'm coming up here because I need some patience. Oh, come on. Come on up here. Come I, on. We got I, it. I need some patience. Okay, well, come here. Watch this. Right here. Right. <laughs> look, look. Watch this. This is not patience, y'all. This is not patience. Okay, God, go ahead. Okay, God, go ahead. I'm ready. Go ahead, God. Anytime, anytime, anytime. That's not patience. <laughs> Okay, patience is this, cheerful endurance, cheerful endurance, and sometimes God will let you keep going through, you'll run around the mountain, and run around <coughs> the mountain, and run around the mountain, until you finally go, you know what, this isn't so bad after all, you know, I, I, I was, uh, <clears throat> I, I was, Watching the Olympics, I love the Olympics, all except for that crazy whatever to take the brooms and Sweet. curl. That's the craziest mess I've ever seen. I felt better about that time when I found out the first time curling was used in the Olympics was 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 uh, back in the 1920s. They used curling to make their hair. <laughs> curling. They, used, cur they used curling back then. France and then introduced. I think they introduced the sport, but it just didn't do too good. Now that, it just looks stupid to me. Push that thing down, and they all taking the broom, and uh, and then look, and then you got these guys in the luge. Now that's real. That's real sports in the luge, or you got the, the the hockey, or the or like Sean White last night <laughs> in that half pipe. Good Lord, have mercy. That man, I mean, he showed. Wow. I mean, everybody's making seventies and eighties. Sean White goes and makes a ninety, almost a ninety four, right to start with. And so uh, again, that's athletic. Who's going to take a broom and push a piece of? Whatever that thing is. Yeah. But get back to it. It's a rock. Yeah, it's a rock. That's why it is a rock with a handle on it. It's crazy. Okay. But, but here it is. Look. Endurance. Cheerful endurance. Cheerful meaning attitude. Right. This is patience. This word for patience is cheerful endurance. Cheerful is your attitude, and patience is why you're waiting. <coughs> And you never know how long you're going to have to wait. It could be just a little while. It can be a long time. But I can tell you this. You can shorten or lengthen your trial by this right here, cheerful endurance. If you can't learn to be cheerful, 
One thing that really aggravates me to no end, when my kids were little and they couldn't get what they wanted, and they would just go. And, uh, and it, yeah, and, that, and as soon as I said, okay, we'll do it. All right. <laughs> and my grandkids do it now. They go. And I go, we're not doing that. And they go. And then I say, okay, we'll do it now. <laughs> and I go, see, if you died like that to start with, you'd already had me doing it. But no, you were. You know. They came in Walmart like that. Yeah. Boys. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Tell you about my, they were I, bad. <laughs> yes, I took uh, DC. I took my two two of my grandbabies like a, like a crazy man. I took my two I took two grandbabies of mine. They were three years old apiece, I think. Uh, uh, Emmy and Dylan to the Dollar Tree, and so I'm gonna let y'all have three dollars a piece to get whatever you want. And it took an hour for them to pick up, and put down, pick up, and put down. I should have said one thing, and then we go over to the Dairy Queen. And what was it called across the, uh, not Dairy Queen, it's where the pizza place is now. Was it called the Dairy Queen, Dairy something? Uh, we went in there. We went in there anyway to get something. Dirty pals? I mean. And Emmy and yeah. says, Emmy says, I got to use the bathroom, Paw Paw. Oh, yeah. And so I said, well, go ahead. And I went and looked. No, but I said, she was getting up. Excuse me. Well, she was getting up. D Dylan said, I got to go. So I said, okay. So I went in the men's bathroom. There was nobody in there. I put Dylan in the men's bathroom. Then Emmy, I said, Emmy, I went in the women's bathroom. Nobody was in there. I put Emmy in the women's bathroom. So Emmy's in the women's bathroom, and all of a sudden I hear this screaming and hollering and beating. <laughs> Emmy has locked herself in the bathroom. Oh, no. And she can't get out. <laughs> and she said, help, oh, boy, help, oh, boy, help, help, help. And so I tried to get the manager to get... It's a DQ. It was a DQ. <coughs> and I'm trying to get the manager to give me the key to the door. And as I'm walking around the corner to get to Emmy, Dylan has opened up the bathroom, the men's bathroom, and his pants are around his ankles. <laughs> and he's walking out in the middle of the hurricane going, can you have me put my pants up, Paul Paul? <laughs> so I got a naked young in there like this. <laughs> I got my other grand young about to go crazy. And I tried to get him and her at the same time, so I just grabbed him, grabbed his pants, and pulled him right over like this and went over. <laughs> and, 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 and got Emmy out, you know. And, and, and I was not very cheerful that day. I can promise you, that was probably one of the worst trials I've had with my grandkids in a public place. But, again, cheerful endurance. Think about your worst trial right now. Everybody just close your eyes. Think about your worst trial right now. Now, now with, with nobody, don't look around. Don't think about anybody else. Just that one trial. You think about your worst trial. And what if I told you right now, <coughs> you can lengthen it or shorten it by your attitude. Not everybody else's attitude, your attitude. You can't change anybody but yourself. So what if I told you that you can shorten or lengthen your attitude, your, your trial by your attitude. How would you see that now? Because I'm pretty sure when you first thought about it, it made you sad. If you can find a way to smile. Matter of fact, if you smile, you make the devil, you drive the devil crazy. Because he's trying to make you, he was trying to make you sad, trying to get you all, all discombobulated. Alright? So, endurance cannot be attained by reading a book. Endurance cannot be attained by listening to a sermon. Endurance cannot be attained uh, uh, even just by praying a prayer. Endurance can only be attained through going through the difficulties of life. Without trials, there is no way you can get endurance. Because in that trial, we are forced to lean on God. So unless you lean on Him, it's not you, you're forced to lean on Him. So, so when life doesn't make sense, I like this thing, take the lemons, when life gives you lemons, cut them up and make lemonade. <coughs> Amen? So now, so now, that was your, your first word, uh, was, re, was rejoice. The second word, actually, uh, which I skipped over, was recognize, and that's recognized knowing that these testings have a purpose. You should put testing beside, recognize beside testing. Because they recognize that God's testing you just to prove he's putting ducamos on you, that you've been tried in the fire and you haven't cracked. The third word, remain. Remain. Because it says, 
But let patience have, her, have its perfect work, then you may be perfect and complete, lacking nothing. That perseverance finishes work. Yes, it is. How many has ever, ever uh, watched one of your kids or watched somebody doing something and they weren't doing it fast enough or you didn't think they were going to get it, so you hadn't done it for them? But you know what? You know what you really did? You didn't necessarily help them. You might have helped the speed, but you actually hurt them. I learned to back off until they just couldn't, until they had to have help. Then it could grow. That's right. Well, Daniel, bless Daniel's heart. Daniel came in one day. Daniel, <coughs> Daniel had decided to cut the grass. He, weren't, he was very young. He was probably first grade. I don't know. He decided he couldn't be able to cut the grass. And at the church. So he goes and cuts the grass at the church. I was cutting the grass, Daddy. It really looks good. Y'all go check it out. I went out there and looked. <laughs> and he didn't do like this. He went. <laughs> and so look, it actually looked like the aliens had landed. And left a little oh, mark in the you know, yeah, crop circle. <laughs> and so I went back to him and said, son, that's really nice. I said, but if we're going to cut the grass again, let Daddy show you how we're going to do it. You got There's got to be a method to it. It's going to be a lot less strenuous on you, and the grass is going to really look good. He said, okay, Daddy. Now, now of course, he don't have that problem. Of course, he's 34. <laughs> but, but when he was six, it was a problem. Okay, so, so remain. I learned a long time ago, if the directions say 12 minutes in the oven, I leave it 12 minutes in the oven. <coughs> and you pull out 10 minutes, what's going to happen? It's going to be ready. That's right. If, 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 if it says 12 minutes, and, and I, now if you've got a really hot oven, sometimes I know I'll back it off 15 seconds or so. Especially if I'm cooking multiple things, I notice that, that it got kind of hard. I need to back off a little bit, but still... I leave it in according to the directions. And if, if somebody does not leave it according to the directions, you're going to have a piece of food that you can't eat. The same way, when God's trying to perfect us, mm -hmm. He lets us stay under trial till we're perfected. That is not a popular thing. I hate the thought that I'm going to have to hurt a little bit longer in order that I can grow. But I would rather grow in the long run, maybe not at the time, but I'd rather grow. <clears throat> And then finally, the fourth word is request. It says, if any of you lack like wisdom, you should ask of God, who gives generously to all without finding fault. I'm going to give it to you in a, a better way versus this old, old English Hispanic. Yeah, we would like for you to review the four words just because um, just because uh, our notes are different than yours. <laughs> yeah, we started writing words. And <laughs> you okay, rejoice number one. Verse 2, <coughs> recognize, verse 3, remain, verse 4, and request, verse 5 through 8. Okay, well now our words match yours. Okay, that's good. That's real good. Okay, that's fine. So, so if any of you lack wisdom, you should ask about who gives generously to all without finding fault. That's amazing, without finding fault. He don't look down and say, say, you big dummy. Can you imagine going to Fred Sanford and asking him for help? You big dummy. Okay. So, <laughs> here we go again. Did everybody hear that story about this you're not an idiot? Yes. Has everybody heard it? If not, it is on YouTube. I'm just going to tell you because Bethany keeps saying it. I want to make sure y'all heard it so you wouldn't think she's just being out there somewhere. Okay. So now... So now, uh, when you ask, you must believe and not doubt, because the one who doubts is like a wave of the sea, blown and tossed by the wind. That person should not expect to receive anything from the Lord. Such a person is double-minded and unstable in all they do. In other words, double-minded literally means to have two spirits. Wow. It also means to have two, two, two spirits, two hearts, two minds. It means to think in two different directions. And and I, I'm the first one to say, I'll do that in a heartbeat. I'll try not to. But I'm in there going, yeah, God's got this. Yeah, God got, God's got it. God's got it. God's got it. 
And then as I'm learning to <coughs> carefully endure the trial, all of a sudden, I quit going, God's got it, and thinking, has he? Does he really have it? And is there an end of this? And then I think about it and I go, hey, son, practice what you preach. He's got this. So, he says that, that you got to go to him and ask for wisdom. The difference in wisdom and knowledge. I've seen a many a person have knowledge but have no wisdom. <coughs> if I had a choice between having a per work with a person with wisdom, if I had a, my number one choice would be somebody with wisdom and knowledge. But if I can't have wisdom and knowledge, I worked with engineers and fountain when I was there. Some had wisdom, some had knowledge, some had both. The people with just knowledge, they could, they could tell you what the book said. They could not spout out the regulations, blah, 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 blah. And if I needed something to, to perfectly fit the book, I'd send them there. If I wanted somebody to work with people and think about what people had to say about things and work with people and, and put the, keep the book as a reference, <coughs> but let the book be as a reference only and let wisdom take over, I would take the person with wisdom over the person with knowledge, and the person with wisdom and knowledge was a powerhouse. Because knowledge is, the, is, is an ability to know what to do, but wisdom is an ability to know how to do it, and what to do, how to use what the knowledge that you've got. And so uh, I've seen a lot of guys had knowledge, but they didn't know how to use it. And wow, did they make a mess all the time. And so, so here it is. He gives us a promise. He says... If we're not double-minded, if we don't have those two spirits about us, he tells us that we're going to actually, uh, we're going to, no, let's see here, it's a little further. <coughs> he tells us, if he ask of God, who, who doubt like what he receives, but for let not the man suppose that he receive anything from the Lord, he that is double-minded man is stable in all of his ways. But it tells us down a little further that we're going to, I love this right here, and it tells us that we're blessed. Blessed. Now that word blessed is used many, many times over now, now, and it says we're going to receive the crown of life. I used to think that word crown of life and blessed meant in the next life only. It doesn't mean in the next life only. It means in this life too. It's not referring to a future crown that's given in heaven. It's referring to a crown of a rich, full life here. You watch these people that know how to do this. These people that know how to to handle these situations. Wow. It's amazing. It's amazing what happens to them. And I'm just going to go over this. Anybody got any <coughs> questions or any comments or anything? I hope this has been very beneficial tonight. But here we go. First, we should rejoice that God is in control of our trials. I tell people all the time, I say, Satan may have his hand on the trigger, but God's got his hand on the throttle. That's pretty cool. Satan may have his hand on the trigger, but God's got his hand on the throttle. So he's protecting. Secondly, recognize that he has a plan to conform us to Christ's image. If, if he's allowing things to happen to you, it's because he wants you to be like Christ. And who's who wants to be like Christ? Every one of his children. He didn't want me to follow, did he? Well, I don't know. He didn't want you to follow, but he used it for your good. He, to he, realized, he made me realize that when he stood me up, that was real. That's right. Wow. That's right. Wow. When God does things like that, just like with Joseph, uh, when Joseph, well, well, he said, you, he told his brothers, you intended to harm me. Satan had his hand on the trigger. He said, but God intended it for my good, for your good. God had his hand on the throne. So, Recognize he's got a plan to conform us to Christ's image. Third, and the trials are not working against us, but for us. Everything you're going through now, believe it or not, and if you think about this too, bad things are not happening. Listen, listen. If you can get this in your head tonight, this will help you tremendously. The things you're going through now are not happening to you. <coughs> they're happening for you. Stuff going through, and even the pain and stuff, it's, it's happening for you. The reason I say happening for you, if it's happening to me, it's going to destroy me. But if it's happening for me, it means God's got control, and God's going to do something with all this. He's going to take a, take a, take a bunch of mess 
uh, and make a big message out of a beautiful message. Third, <laughs> we should remain there until God brings us out. If I try to bring myself out, you know, I'm going to get out too early, and I'm not going to be ready for the next. Just remember this. Every level you're at in life, every level you're at in life, you have a, and when I say new level, new devil, it's still the same devil. We're talking about different trials. Every level you're at in life, once you defeat that devil or that trial, then you go to the next level, and you're prepared for the next level. The problem is some of us have tried to skip two or three levels, and we still brought those old devils with us. And so now we're trying to fight this fight trial that we could fight if it was just one, but we're trying to fight all the other trials before that we should have already won, but we didn't because we got out too early. And so now we're fighting five trials at one time, and it's taking us down if we did be patient with God and let God do what he was going to do and be patient. We would be perfect and entire, wanting nothing. We'd go to the next level, <coughs> the next level, and the next level, and we'd fight one devil at a time. So, when you let trials produce their work in spiritual growth and patience. And fourthly, let us ask God for wisdom because God wants our trials to make us better, not bitter. Better, not bitter. And I have been so many times, I've caught myself having to fight the bitter bug. Because things were happening, I'm going, this don't make sense to me. <laughs> you know, uh, uh, I had somebody in my family, they were going through a trial with one of their kids. And I was just trying to encourage them. And so I said, you know, I know this sounds like it's the end of life as you know it right now, but it's not. You're going to survive this. This is not as bad as you think it is. And they said, right, this is bad. And I said, and it was, it was bad. But I said, it's not as bad as you think. It's not out of control, blah, blah, blah. And while I'm trying to lift him up, he goes, well, I would expect that to happen to you. But me? And the problem was, he has seen me go through trial after trial after trial and through the ministry and through family and my sick wife and all this stuff. And he seemed to have one of those little perfect little lives where everything was hunky-dory and, you know, everything was perfect for him. He was living in a little storybook. But instead of him receiving what I was trying to tell him, all he could tell me was, now he's upset because that stuff should have happened to me, not him. Really? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, I kind of, I, 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 matter of fact, when he said that, I said, I don't think I'm going to stop encouraging him right now. At least for the moment. <laughs> yeah. So, so, again, God uses trials in all these ways. And I thank God that he has directed me and inspected me and corrected me and protected me and perfected me. There's some people in your life right now that you think if they don't, God don't do something, you're going to absolutely blow up, blow a gasket. And let me tell you what these people are in your life. These people are sandpaper. And you know what they're there for? They're there to, to scrub off the rough edges on your life. Wow. Sometimes, sometimes it may be, look, and it'll have to be the same person all the time. But God uses tough situations and tough people as sandpaper to get rid of those rough edges. So the pieces will fit together. It'd be nice if you just come down and go, zzz, there it is. But it's not, zzz, there it is. You know, it's like watching these basketball players, NBA basketball players, thinking, man, I wish I could make a trillion dollars a year. And you know, most of these guys make like $100,000 a basket. If you take a basket and how much they make, make it, or baseball players, you know, per game, they make more in one game than most of us will make in 10 years. I wouldn't even know what to do with that kind of money. Right, but I was going to say is that you're thinking, this is so easy for them. But then if you could just go back and look during the day, the training they're going through. <coughs> Michael Jordan looked like he could just throw that basketball like nobody's business. But he shot, he shot 500 to 1,000 goals in day. To him, that is given much, much is required. That's right. That's right. You didn't see him out there doing that. Mm -hmm. You know, and didn't see some of these guys out there. I, I was watching the Olympics. You know, when they were getting ready to do the, they were, the little ladies were getting ready to do the luge. 
But like I said, I love to lose for some reason because it's the stupidest thing. Who wants to lay on your back like this Amen. and fly down and you're looking like this? I mean, it's, that's got to be the craziest sport. But you know what? It's fun to watch. For some reason, I, I said, check it out. Let's go. Come on. It was like something a redneck would invent. Okay. Okay. Like he was trying to get away from somebody. He got on, got on his horse wrong and took off the wrong way. He's going, all right. But, but I was watching and, and this girl was getting ready to go. And before she went, she was standing with her, because it was 15 degrees, the ice was 15 degrees, the weather, the wind was 11, or the atmosphere was 11 degrees, plus wind chill fighter. <coughs> and she had a medicine ball. And she was waiting to go up. And while she's waiting to go up and get on the loose, she's got this big old medicine ball that's heavy. Anybody ever thrown a medicine ball? And she's taking it, and she's getting her legs just right. And she takes it, and she's throwing it. And it comes back to her, about knocks her down, and she picks her back up, and she throws it. I said, what is she doing? And, and then they showed her coach and said, she's practicing get, building up her strength so when she takes off on that luge, when she does like this, to get going, she'll get, she'll get more strength. So what she's doing, we don't see that stuff. And you know that most people on the luge are in their 30s because somebody in their 20s did not have enough experience to ride the luge without killing herself. I and, I, and I did happen to see a guy. Did y'all see the guy in the Olympics killed himself? He, he was... Uh, he was on a practice run, and he goes down, and, and he, 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 he loses in a curve, and it throws him off the loose, and he goes backwards. And there's these pylons, and he hits his neck on a pylon, and I suppose it killed him instantly, but it snapped his neck. Okay, they, they went through and had to do some real, this was just a few years back. Then they had to come move all the stuff out the way, so now people don't lose, they don't have all this stuff around them. <laughs> but, but again, you know, this is serious stuff. We always see this guy getting up there and he's thinking, you know, you know here's a redneck. Hey, y'all, watch this. The famous last words of a redneck. Hey, y'all, watch this. Uh, but I heard him say, you got to be at least in your 30s and have been competing for, and these people that were ice skating have been a team for 18 years. 18 years. And we look at it and think about it, man, we can do I can do that. I mean, anytime if Joe Montana had to talk to me, he might have been a really good quarterback. <laughs> yeah, if Dan Marino had listened to me, he'd have won a Super Bowl. Oh. <laughs> right. We don't see all the stuff they do behind the scenes to get like they are. The stuff they do behind the scenes is tough. Very, very tough. I think about when I coached the Bath Dolphins, uh, we, we've lost... In three years, we lost maybe three games in three years. Emmaus is a good example of that, too. Yeah, yeah. And with three, three games in three years, you know why we lost three games in three years? Because we practiced. We took the biggest boys and put them against each other. And we, we fought them hard. We, we run them hard. And they, they said the practices were much harder than the games. So by the time they got to the game, they were ready for those guys because they'd been up against the hardest we had and hit the hardest. You know, in practice, so sometimes God's letting us get, look, <coughs> and he's got you in the dark, he's actually training you. You're in the dark area, he's training you, getting you ready, so when you're in the light, people can see God. I don't want to see me, I want to see God. That fountain, I was always going to say, how in the world did you get that accomplished? And I go, every time I, I go, God, it's God. You know, give God the glory. I don't want any. I, well, the other day a guy told me, said, a guy stopped me and said, I said, man, I'm going to tell you what. He said, that mighty army, every day this week, it came in at the right time with the right thing. And he said, man, it was so awesome. And he said, I sent it to my sister-in-law, and I sent you a thing. So you put it on mighty army because, because it's so awesome. And she said, that, that, that's mighty army. And I said, well, it ain't me. And you know what he said? I was trying to give God the glory. And I said, it ain't me, it's God. And, he said, and here's what he said. Look, well, I know it ain't you. You ain't that smart. <laughs> This is what you say back to him. Shoot me down. So look, so again, you're going through things, but remember, like those Olympic those Olympic guys, you know one of the guys that was in the luge last year or last Olympics missed the Olympics by four one hundredths of a second. Oh, my God. <coughs> four, four one-hundredths of a second. But he was in the wow. Olympics this year, and he practiced 
the whole time. And he said he practiced with sadness because he missed it by four one hundredths mm. of a second making the Olympic team. Mm. Wow. But, he, but instead of going, well, I didn't get a chance to play, so I'm not, blah, 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 blah. He kept practicing, and he, he kept it in his mind, he kept practicing, and he wound up going to the Olympics this time. So, again, this is not easy. Life is not easy. If anybody's got an easy life, you better watch out because they're telling you one. The mother Teresa quote. I know God hears me. Won't give me more than I can handle. I just wish he didn't trust me so much. There you go. There you go, sister. <laughs> yes. Anybody else? I just can only think of a Rocky theme song right now every time we talk about the Olympics. Well, I, you know, I think about you know Rocky. Sylvester Sloan wrote just about all of them. I don't think he wrote the last one. He didn't write the one that, uh, where he's training. Creed. Creed. He didn't write Creed. But he wrote all the other ones. And in the last one in, in Balboa, where he's where he goes and, and fights as an old man. And I've used it here at the church and, and, and put it up where he tells his son, he says, This isn't you, the world will take you and put you in a mold and try to make you do their thing. And he said, But you can't let them do that. And he says, Somewhere along the way you quit trying. And he says, You don't need to quit trying, you get back up. And he said, he said, It's not how hard you can hit, it's how hard you can be hit and keep on moving forward. That is so powerful. I hear it in my head all the time. It's not how hard you can hit. It's how hard you can be hit and keep moving forward. That's powerful. And that's what James is saying here. It's not how hard you can hit. It's how hard you can be hit and keep moving forward. Count it all joy. Any more questions? Comments? I think next week we'll end up with one more thing on trials. Then we'll go back into God's purpose for our lives. We'll go back to, we'll, yeah. Yeah, we're going to go back to God's purpose, but I just wanted to go ahead and this is just something I felt the need to go into as I was praying. Uh, and so next week will be one more week. It's not going to be based on this. It's based on something entirely different. But how God, but how God uh, uses the perfecting process in our life. And then uh, uh, the following could be God's purpose, how we define God's purpose in our life. And all hearts, mind, hearts and minds clear? All right. Father, we love you. We praise your name. We thank you for your grace, your mercy. We thank you for... All that you do for us, Lord, thank you, God, that we don't have to walk alone, God. Even though we may feel alone, we're not. You're there with us. And I ask you right now, Lord, to touch us, to anoint us, to use us in a very powerful way. And we thank you for it right now. In the name of Jesus, we pray. And, Lord, help us, Lord, to be able to, to stay on that potter's wheel while you're working on us and stay on the, the grinding wheel while you're grinding us, Lord, to know, Lord, that, that this stuff is not here to hurt us. You're not. This is not happening to us. It's happening for us. And if we can get that in our mind, this stuff is not happening to us, but for us, then we know, God, that you'll work through us. And we thank you for it. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Church said? Amen. Amen.